Hi, I'm Vicky Vortex. Today I'm going to give you a workshop on neck and back pain relief. So first of all, I'd like to share my story. I was actually in a lot of pain during the lockdown because I was diagnosed with um, arthritis in my neck and my back. And I actually saw some doctors for it. And uh, all they did was that they gave me the um, uh, far infrared light therapy for about half an hour, once every week. And I've seen a lot of chiropractors for like over a decade before. And um, <clears throat> it didn't really help. Uh, so I, I've done a lot of research on back pain and neck pain relief in order to help myself because I realized that if you don't help yourself, then no one else will help you. So um, I'm going to share my method. So I've actually come up with um, the Vortex Vitality Method for neck and back pain relief. And it's, it has four components. It has um, positive mindset because stress is um, a major cause of pain, actually, and inflammation. And then um, detox is also a big thing. It really, it's really, really helpful if you can detox yourself and avoid inflammation. And um, another, an, another way that I've come up with is um, yoga and Pilates. So not just stretches, but also stabilizing and strengthening the joints, for example, that really helps me with the back pain. And number four is nutrition. So if you can focus on an anti-inflammatory anti -inflammatory diet um, and also drink lots of water and herbal tea, that would also really help to flush out the toxins. And as long as your joints are not inflamed, you're in much less pain. So first of all, let's start with um, <clears throat> stress management. I'm also a breath coach. And one type of breathing that I really like is called box breathing. So you can do it with me. And if you can make the sound of the ocean by tightening the back of your throat, then it, it would actually stimulate your vagus nerve directly. And it sounds like this. Yeah. And so the box breathing is to count seven, breathe in, then hold your breath for seven, breathe out for seven, and then hold your breath for seven. So let's do this together. Breathing in. And hold for seven. And then breathe out for seven. And hold for seven. Breathing in. Hold. And breathe out for seven. And breathe out and hold for seven. Breathe in for seven. Hold. And breathe out. Uh, and hold. Inhale for seven. Hold. Breathe out for seven. <clears throat> Hold. Inhale for seven. Hold. Breathe out for seven. <clears throat> Inhale for seven. Oh, sorry, hold for seven. Inhale for seven. Hold. Exhale 
and breathe out for seven. Hold. Last round, inhale. Hold. Breathe out for seven. Hold for seven. Inhale deeply and exhale deeply. You see, what you've done is that you've actually turned on the parasympathetic nervous system manually by stimulating your vagus nerve with the ujjayi breathing. And also when you're counting your breath, you're actually taking your mind off the issues that are actually bothering you. So this is a great way to relax yourself when you're, when you're stressed out and um, then it actually lowers the level of inflammation in your body as well. So another way of, um, <clears throat> of relaxing yourself is actually starting the day and ending the day with gratitude. If you can keep a gratitude journal, then you have a positive mindset. And when you have a positive mindset, you're actually in a lot, a, a lot less pain because of that. Another thing that I'd like to talk about is detoxification. It is extremely important because the reason why we're so inflamed, why we're in so much pain, is because it's because we're actually full of toxins, especially in, in our joints where we have arthritis or where we have inflammation. The reason why we're in so much pain is because our bodies are inflamed. So one simple way of detoxifying yourself is grounding or earthing. So just simply take off your shoes uh, and go for a walk either on the beach or in your garden or just on the ground that is not elevated like in a building. As long as you're attached to the ground, then if you can actually earth yourself or ground yourself for 30 minutes accumulatively. So you can actually do 15 minutes in the morning and 15 minutes in the evening. And that way you're actually detoxifying your body of inflammation caused by EMF, electromagnetic field, that is from your mobile phone, your computer, your television. There are so many things that actually causes, cause inflammation in your body. So just by grounding yourself for half an hour every day, especially on the wet bit of grass or the, or the beach, because it's, um, um, the electricity can travel a lot easier when it's wet. And that way you're actually detoxifying yourself of EMF. And um, start your day with a lemon drink, a big glass of either lemon water, or you can make ginger and turmeric tea with black pepper and herbs like oregano, um, thyme and um, rosemary and sage all together. They work synergistically and it would really help with your inflammation as well. So, um, but what's really important is that you need to have made the, the ginger, the ginger and turmeric tea the night before, so that the next morning when you drink it, it's actually cooled down to room temperature because when you add lemon juice to it, the hot water would actually kill the enzymes that flushes and detoxes your liver. So it's very, very important to have it uh, at room temperature or body temperature and not a valve. So that is my favorite way of detoxifying myself first thing in the morning. And then um, another thing that you can do is if you have a trampoline is rebounding. If you do it for 20 minutes a day, that's what I do. Um, and you do HIIT on your trampoline. Say for example, you just bounce normally remember that you're bouncing down, you're not jumping up. If you bounce down for like two and a half minutes and then you just run as fast as you can on the trampoline for 30 seconds, and then you do two and a half minutes again and then 30 seconds, and you do that for 20 minutes, then you actually activate your lymphatic system that doesn't have a pump, not like the heart, um, the blood. So you actually need to move your lymph manually in order to detox yourself properly. And with the HIIT, you get, you get cardio and it's a very efficient way 
um, to activate your metabolism. And the thing I like about the tram trampoline is that there's actually no impact. So it's, it's, it's safer for your joint than jogging on the floor. If you don't have a trampoline, then what you can do is to use just the skipping rope. And as long as you bounce up and down, you are actually activating the lymphatic circulation. So that's what I do. And then um, another thing that you can do for uh, detox is a far infrared sauna. If you have access to it, then it's, it's a great way to, um, to detoxify yourself rather than a normal sauna because the far infrared rays actually go straight into your organs and then take the um, toxins out directly without going through your bloodstream like in a normal sauna. And if you put an amethyst in your far infrared sauna as well, then it actually penetrates a few inches deeper into your body to detox. But make sure that you wipe your, your sweat off so that you don't reabsorb all the toxins in your body. Um, and then, so sweating is very good. What I do also, I have my own herbal teammates for arthritis. So if you, if you, have, um, if you do some research, you would have a list of um, herbal tea that you can actually mix together. I've actually written a blog about it on vickyvortex.com if you want to have the recipe. It's there for you and it tastes really good. I love licorice, the licorice flavor because it, it, it tastes good. It gives the sweetness to the tea, but it also replenishes your adrenal. So that would really help with your fatigue and your stress as well. And after the sauna, I love having a triple salt bath. So I put, all together, one kilo of Himalayan salt, um, Epsom salt, and um, magnesium flakes from the Dead Sea. So you need actually all together just one kilo into a hot bath, of, uh, as hot as you can get. And then if you just soak in it for at least 45 minutes to an hour, then it is so deeply relaxing and it's very, very good for your for your uh, bones and your joints and also your, your um, circulatory system as well. <clears throat> it's great for the whole body. And if you do it before bedtime, I promise you, you're gonna have the deepest sleep ever. I just did, I just had one recently and I measured my deep sleep with my watch and I had an hour and 20 minutes of deep sleep, which is just highly rejuvenating and relaxing. So. Most of us are actually deprived of magnesium and absorbing magnesium through our skin topically is the most efficient way of actually absorbing magnesium and you would have the best night's sleep ever. Okay, so let's talk about the reason why we got in ourselves into so much pain to start off with. It is a very, very normal phenomenon most people suffer from neck pain and back pain because of our technology. The reason is because we use the phone all the time. And most people, when they use the phone, they hold it here, especially when they're on the tube or like in public transport, maybe for privacy, maybe it's just a bad habit. So let me explain to you what happens to your head, like to your body when you dangle your head like this. So normally um, our head is just 12 pounds when it is in line with the center of gravity when we're standing up straight. But when we look down on our phone like that, just three inches forward, instead of being 12 pounds, our head is now 24 pounds. It's a lot heavier because it's off the center of gravity and our head gets very heavy. And then we drop our head further and now the head is 36 pounds. And when we go like this, our head is like 48 pounds. So no wonder when you see old people walking around like that, it's because gravity has actually won over and, um, <clears throat> and there is no way that they can get back. And that causes an enormous strain in the back 
and it hurts a lot because of our lifestyle. So when we're using our phone, rather than, rather than using it like this, why don't we just hold it up so that it is on the same level as the eye and we don't tilt our head? And you can still, you can still text like this. Just use your elbow to pr press against your torso so that you can actually text if you want to. Or use this arm, this hand to support your elbow so that you can read your phone. If you find it too difficult, then lying down and, and using your phone is much better because at least your, then your neck is straight. And when you're sleeping, make sure that your, your pillow is not too high. Definitely don't use two pillows because when, when your head is folded, then it actually affects our posture. Um, and when it comes to using the computer, what you can do is to simply put a, the cheapest way is to put a paper box on top of the table and then put your laptop on top of it. So at least your computer is on the same eye level and it's not, you don't, you don't bend down to, to type because that is when, when um, injury happens. This is, this is when people, you know, like have really bad posture. And because we're in our heads so much, because we're so focused on the content of the phone and the computer, we actually forget about our posture. So make sure that it is on the on the eye level, the same, you know, like so, so that you don't tilt your head. And if you if you always have your head down because you use your hands a lot in the kitchen or if you work with your hands a lot, then there are a few postures that you can do to counter it. So just every now and then make sure that you open up your shoulders like that by clasping your hands behind you. And if you can't clasp your hands, just hold on to the back of your chair and make sure that you roll your shoulders up and back and open up your chest. And then you look up. I mean, that way you're opening up your chest. The reason why um, we're in so much pain in the neck is because our shoulders are usually rounded forward. And when we round our shoulders forward, that is when we have really sore neck and shoulders. And um, <clears throat> so there are a few things that you can do. If you, if you have like, if you've lost your C curve, which I actually have done and I've seen a chiropractor for it, then it is very important for you to do this exercise. So you tuck your chin, like make a double chin, and then you look up. Open up your shoulders, tuck your chin, and then you slowly look up like this. If you can do this exercise a hundred times a day, you can do it 50 times in the morning, 50 times in the evening, then it would really help you to regain your, your C curve in the neck. Because over time, we would actually lose that curve. And then another thing that you can do to, to counter the, the, this is actually to lie down on the fit ball and just relax your head. That way you're actually, you're actually regaining your natural curve in the head. If you don't have a fit ball, then what you can do is just to dangle your head off the edge of your couch and just um, uh, use gravity to counter your, your hunching. And that really helps too. Okay, so another way of opening up your shoulder is to go against the wall. And then you put one hand here and then you just like a 90, 90 degree and then you step forward and then you just open up your shoulder like that. So your right foot in front of you, and then you open up your shoulder like that. And then the other side as well. So set your left foot forward and your right shoulder is now opening against the wall. So that's one way of doing it. And another way of opening up your shoulder is to actually do it on the, um, on the floor as well. So you lie down on the floor, 
your right arm in the 1990 goal pose and then you just press down on your left hand and then you open up your right shoulder on the floor like that make sure you don't hurt yourself and just go as far as you can without forcing it and if you put your arm in a y shape then this actually is a lot tighter as well and it opens up more and then you do the other side so goal pose on the left arm and then you just press down on your right hand and then you stretch and you breathe deeply in order to open it so that's one way another way is to uh, lie down imagine that you're swimming but you put the left arm in front of you and then you just open up to the right and you look over your right shoulder and you tighten your glute as well this is a really good shoulder opener as well so inhale open and look over your right shoulder and the other side so you can press down on your right arm and then open up to the left side and look over your left shoulder and inhale open and up inhale and open and up okay so in order to straighten your back you would actually need to um, strengthen your back as well by working against gravity so superman is a good one exhale down inhale up exhale down inhale up exhale down and inhale up and then t-shape same thing inhale up exhale down inhale up exhale down inhale all the way up and release and now grab hold of your ankles exhale down inhale up exhale down inhale kick back that way you're opening up your shoulders exhale down and inhale up and then clasp your hands together and straighten roll your shoulders up and back and straighten up your arms inhale and exhale down inhale up exhale and inhale all the way up that way you're opening up your shoulders now a lot of people have actually a big lump it's called a dowager hump here at the back of your neck it's basically it's a lump of fat together with a lot of scar tissues and um and so what you can do you can do it on the floor if you, but if you don't have a mat you can actually do it on a door frame as well so you do uh so imagine that you're holding on to a door frame and you start with a y shape inhale and then exhale you pull your elbows together and squeeze and look up inhale y shape and exhale you can do it on the floor against the gravity as well just like superman inhale or you can do it in the door frame and you, you use the door frame to open up your shoulders more and exhale squeeze your shoulder blades together and your elbows together so that's squeezing the top of your shoulder blades together and then it's t-shaped inhale and exhale bend your elbows now you're squeezing the middle uh, of your shoulder blades and then you drop your hands down t-shape inhale and exhale squeeze your shoulder blades and your elbows together and drop your hands inhale and exhale squeeze your shoulder blades and your elbows together and you drop your hands and then to squeeze the bottom of your shoulder blades is a w shape inhale and exhale squeeze and down inhale w shape exhale squeeze the bottom of your shoulder blades and your elbows together and down inhale and exhale and you can look up as well so whenever you can just remember to look up that way you're actually countering the countering the the pose uh for like having your head down the whole time just in, just remember to look up because most of the time we're looking down sometimes for no reason at all okay so um another effective stretch 
is called shoulder pal. Now, this is for people who use the computer a lot and your shoulders are rounded forward like that all the time. So whenever you're at the keyboard, just remember to open, roll your shoulders up and back, and then you do whatever, but do not hunch forward and do not round the shoulders forward because you're closing up your chest and that's not good for your posture or your circulation. So with your right hand, you can hold a band if you have one or a stock or a towel, whatever you can grab hold of and have your right elbow up, push your right elbow towards yourself and then your left elbow down. Now, if you can't, if the hands can't reach together, it's perfectly okay to actually grab hold of, of the band or the sock or something. And then slowly, slowly, slowly walk your hands together. And if, you, if they can't be together, that's fine. But what's really important then is then that you, when you inhale, you push your head back and roll your head up. And that way you're opening up your shoulder joint. And this is a very good counter pose for those who hunch forward the whole time. Inhale, head back, and push your shoulders open. Inhale, and head back. So if you can clasp your hands together, you clasp your hands together like that with your fingers. If not, just hold on to the band or the sock and head back. And do it like 10 times on each side. Inhale, and exhale. And if your shoulder, if your shoulder joint is open, then you will have a lot less pain. Inhale and exhale. Okay, now switch sides. So grab hold of the band with your left hand, left elbow up, right elbow down. Walk your hands together with the band. If you can clasp and clasp, if, if not, then just hold on to it. And again, inhale back, look up and exhale. And slowly, you will be able to open up the joint and it feels really good to drop your head to the right as well for a side stretch. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale and exhale. Release. Very good. Now shake it all out. And you can also use the band to add more pressure to when you do the tuck chin and then your head up, more resistant. Tuck your chin and then your head up, your head up. And that way you're actually training, strengthening the shoulders in your neck and your, in the, the muscles in your neck and your shoulders. And that way you will be more upright than before. Okay, so now um, another pose that you can do is uh, by Emma Forrest. So what you can do is that imagine that you're doing a side stretch. So your leg, your right leg is in a 90 degree angle. Just first of all, do a side stretch. And then you drop your left arm down and you just drop your head to one side. And that way you're really getting a good stretch on the left side of your neck. So stretching really helps as well. And take a deep breath. Ujjayi breathing, tightening the uh, back of your throat. And this is a good shoulder opener as well. And then the other side, so pivot your feet. Wide stance, left, right, right um, foot at a 45 degree and left leg in a 90 degree angle. Stretch first, inhale, and then exhale. Drop your, your head and your arm um, to one side and give yourself a nice big stretch. Inhale and exhale, inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Another stretch that is 
inspired by Anna Forrest is actually one that is a that is the, that is like a bird. So initiate the rotation um, with your shoulders first. So have your have your right knee bent and initiate the rotation from your shoulder joint. So and then you you drop your head as well, and then you rotate your whole whole arm like twisting a towel, and then yeah, and then look up. And again, initiating from the shoulders. Inhale, look up. Like wringing a towel. And it feels really good in your shoulder joint. And inhale. And then the other side. So pivot your feet to the other side. Bend at your left knee. Inhale. And exhale. Rotate forward and head down. Inhale, rotate backwards and look up. Exhale, down. And inhale up. And once more, exhale, down. And inhale up. Ah, that feels really good, doesn't it? Okay, so now let's talk about uh, back pain. The reason why we are in so much pain in the lower back for 95% of the people is because we have a very tight psoas muscles that actually pulls our lower back forward and we have tight hip flexors as well as tight hamstrings because we sit down a lot. So one way of stretching the, those muscles it's actually very simple. So you put one foot on the chair and then you just hinge forward. You're stretching the hip flexors here. Keep your back straight, don't hunch forward. So keep your back straight and just give yourself a nice stretch like this. And have your belly in as well so that you're supporting your spine. Now, it's very important to stretch here and to just stretch for 30 seconds and because your muscles actually would uh, tighten up again in about four hours. So every four hours, if you can, then you just put one foot onto the, uh, onto the chair and then you just stretch it forward like this, back straight and belly in, and then the other side. So 30 seconds every four hours is very doable. And that will actually help you to resolve back pain so uh, back straight, belly in, and just stretch your hip flexors. Yeah, so that's very good. So that's one stretch that you can do. Now, another good stretch for the hip flexors is the lizard pose. So you can step one. You can stay here if that's enough for you. Make sure that you hinge forward a bit. Now, for those who can, then you can put your hands down and give your hip flexors a very, very good stretch on this side. And if you want to go further, then you put your elbows onto the floor. You wing your left knee to the side, and then you can lift your knee up and you can rock backwards and forward. And this is a great stretch for your hip flexors. It's called a lizard pose. Yeah, so 30 seconds would be enough of a stretch, but make sure that you do it often. Okay, so step one is here. If you want to stay here, you can. And step two is your hands on the same level as your right heel. You can stay here if you want, if that's enough. And if you want more challenge, then put your elbows onto the floor and then get onto your left toe and you rock backwards and forward. Wing your right knee out to deepen the stretch. This is a great hip opener. And that way it alleviates your back pain. Okay, so another great thing that you can do is rotation. 
So your legs are in 90, 90 degrees. Inhale, left arm up and exhale. Twist over to the right, hands in prayer. Inhale, lift and exhale. Look at the ceiling. Inhale, lift and exhale. Twist further. Inhale, lift and exhale. Twist all the way. Inhale, open. It feels really good here, doesn't it? Okay, the other side now. So left knee up, right knee down. Inhale, right arm up. Exhale, twist over to the left hand in prayer. Inhale, lift. Exhale, look at the ceiling. Inhale, lift. Exhale, twist further, pushing with your right elbow to twist further. Inhale, lift. Exhale, and open. Inhale, and exhale. So that really helps. Um, the, so another thing that you can do is that uh, imagine that you are lying on a high table or a kitchen bench. So you have one leg actually dangling off the edge. So just actually stretching your hip flexors here. And then with, what you do with the other leg is that you grab hold of it and you pull with both arms, so it's not very stable. But if you can pull with both arms towards you and you dangle your left leg off the table or the kitchen bench so that you completely relax the one side and you stretch the hip flexor while you grab hold really tight of the other leg, your knee towards your chest. That way you give your uh, hip flexor a maximum stretch and that's really helpful. You do it on both sides. So make sure that the table uh, or the kitchen bench is actually high enough for you to dangle your leg off it loosely to give it a maximum stretch. Okay. So another pose that you can do is, um, okay, so there are two types of back pain that you need to pay attention to. For example, if you find um, sitting down a lot easier than standing up or walking around, it means that you have stenosis. What it means is that the, uh, the holes in the, uh, through which the, the nerves come out are actually compressed. So it's like pinched nerves. And, uh, and it, that's why it's hurting you. And you find sitting down a relief, especially if you're over the age of 40 then what you need to do is to actually round your spine forward in order to create space in between the vertebrae. And, and it goes like this. So in, inhale and exhale. So start with your head first and then slowly, slowly roll yourself down one vertebrae at a time. Bend your knees slightly and just hold there and breathe. Now this gives your hamstring a nice stretch as well. Bend your knees to uh, release your lower back further and drop your head completely. Inhale and exhale. Now this will be a really good pain relief if you have stenosis. So exhale and then inhale. Slowly roll yourself up one vertebrae at a time. Slowly and your head comes up last. That way you're creating space in between the vertebrae to release the, the nerves that are actually trapped in between. Inhale and exhale slowly. Head first and then one vertebrae at a time. Bend your knees slightly to release your lower back and stretch your hamstrings as well as the back of your legs. Inhale and exhale. Ujjayi breathing. Inhale and exhale. And then inhale, slowly come up, one vertebrae at a, at a time, and your head comes up last. So if you, if you don't have, like, if you're in public, the easiest way to do is to actually just round forward on the chair. So as long as you're rounding forward, you're, you're actually releasing pressure off your nerve. And then you slowly roll back up again. And if you're at home, the easiest way to do this exercise is to lie down. 
and round your back. Light, just relax your head. And just use both hands to grab hold of your knee, rounding your back. And if you want more uh, stretch, then you open up your knees and you just press your knees towards the floor. Like this, rounding your back. And you do this for like 30 seconds and then release, straighten your arms, inhale, and then exhale. You pull your knees again towards your chest, inhale, and exhale. So these stretches, rounding forward, is for people who find sitting down a lot easier than standing up. So when they sit down, their pain is released. Now the opposite is that for me, um, I find it a lot easier to stand up and I find sitting down very difficult. And that's because actually the reason why we find sitting down hurts is because we have bulging discs. With bad posture, if, with us rounding forward, hunching forward the whole time, uh, we, we have the, the, the jelly-like disc in between the ver vertebrae that actually got squeezed out to the back. And uh, if that's the case, if you find standing up or walking a lot easier than sitting down, then you do the opposite. Now, you need, to, you need to arch your head back, your chest up, but keep your back, keep your back kind of slight, just slightly arched, chest up and chin tucked in a little bit. And you breathe in. And you do this again for 30 seconds, back again, and then and again, you stretch and you, if it feels good for you, then you probably have a bulging disc because uh, you haven't been sitting straight uh, for over a very long period of time and the jelly actually gets squeezed out to the back. So you do this six sets of 10 like this. And if you don't have any pain um, below your knee, then you only need to do it for six weeks and then eventually you will develop some scar tissue at the back of your spine and that would actually eventually push the jelly the disc back into place again. If you have pain below your knee from this exercise, then you would need six weeks to actually to fix it. So just keep at it and keep doing it and you will find relief. So, um, okay. so. A lot of us actually have sciatica pain. And when it comes to sciatica, and that is uh, your, your joint being loose. And here is what you need. I have a belt because during the lockdown, I actually had a lot of pain. And I found that if you can do a test, if you press your sacroiliac joint, which is the which is the two joints above your sacrum, where your hip bones and your sacrum meet, which is right here. You can feel the two bones sticking out. That is the joint. If you press them in and you walk and you find that it's a lot easier for you, uh, that, that maybe even the pain goes away, then that's because your sacroiliac joint is very loose. So what I did was that I was using this belt you, make, you can make it very, very tight here. And you can, when you tighten it, you actually press the joint in, it keeps your back straight, keeps your belly in, and it actually co corrects your posture. So this belt has actually taken me through the pain during the lockdown. It really helps when I sat down on the couch, my back is straight, it is supported, and the joint is stable, it's in, and I just feel so much better when, when the joint is stable. So sometimes when your joint is loose, instead of, um, instead of stretching, because you would just actually make it looser. So what you need to do is to strengthen the muscles around that joint in order to stabilize it, in order to take the pain away. So what you do is that you have a tight band and then you put it on the outside of your knees, put it around your knees, and then you do this, Stretch, inhale and exhale. You open to one side, inhale and exhale. Open, inhale and exhale, open. That way you're actually strengthening the muscles, the piriformis 
joints that uh, muscles that you can actually stabilize your joints instead of just stretching it. So, and then the other side, inhale and exhale, open. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. So this is a very subtle movement, but it's very good for the stability of your piriformis. So that is one, one thing that you can do. And then another thing, of course, is to strengthen your glute muscle. So you can strengthen it by bending one the, your front knee, and then you just slide your, your right knee, slide, slide your right leg back, and that way you're tightening your glutes and you're strengthening it. So that is another way of stabilizing your sacroiliac joint. And back, inhale and exhale. Tighten your glutes, inhale and exhale. And of course, there is the bridge pose. That's very good. So you lie down, touch your heels, inhale and exhale. You squeeze your glutes, inhale and exhale. Inhale. And exhale. So stabilizing your glutes, you can actually then isolate your leg and do leg circles, inhale and exhale. So you just isolate the movement of your feet, but of your leg, but without moving your hips at all. And that stabilization is actually very helpful with the joints. Inhale and exhale. Lift your hips up, inhale. Point your left leg, and then you draw very small circles. The, the key, the emphasis is actually the stability of your hips. If you have a stable hip, then you will have a stable joint. And, and that's very, very important. OK, so um, in order to test yourself whether you have a, a tight piriformis or not, so one thing that you can do is to do the test of the figure of four. See if you can put your if you can put your ankle above your knee or not. If you can't, if it's just below the knee, if you can't put it above your knee, it means that your piriformis muscles are very tight. And then the other side. You also test, you need to test for balance, the left or right leg, because if you if you have one leg more flexible than the other, see if you can go above your knee or not. If not, if you're here, then you would need to do the stretches. So there are a few ways that you can do the stretches on. So you can do it against the wall, standing up, or you can actually sit down and you put your right foot onto your left, onto your left side like this. Remember to flex your right foot because you want to protect your right knee joint, inhale and exhale, bend forward, back straight, inhale and exhale, forward, back straight, again, inhale and exhale. This is a great, this is a great piriformis stretch for sciatica especially. So flex your left foot, put it onto the, onto your right side, inhale, Exhale, back straight, look forward, inhale, and exhale, inhale, and exhale. So when you're standing up, you can do that, but um, the wall is not very stable, so you can also do it by lying down. Again, flex your right foot, and don't grab onto your knee because it might hurt your knee. So you want to grab the the back of your left thigh and exhale. And now try and pull your right knee towards the right a bit for a further, for a deeper stretch. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, flex both feet and exhale. And then the other side, flex your left foot and grab hold of your right, back of your right thigh and exhale. Now move your left knee towards the left further and stretch. This is a great stretch for the piriformis inhale and exhale. So if you want to go deeper, you can actually do a pigeon pose. So downward facing dog, inhale, lift your 
right leg up and exhale right foot make sure that you tuck your toes under and then you give yourself a back bend and exhale lengthen your spine and then put your forehead onto the mat and hands in prayer inhale and exhale this is the deepest stretch inhale and exhale putting your hands together above your head opens up your shoulder joints as well inhale and exhale and then the other side downward facing dog let lift your left leg up inhale and exhale your left foot across to the right tuck your toes under inhale look up open up your shoulders exhale crawl yourself forward inhale and exhale drop your forehead onto the floor inhale and exhale inhale and exhale inhale and exhale well done and then you can also just lift your left knee up give yourself a nice stretch and child's pose so toes together knees apart slide your torso forward lengthening your spine and put your forehead onto the onto the mat this is a great pose for straightening your spine especially if you hunch forward a lot So don't give yourself a hard time because I think most people are hunching forward nowadays. So now I want to show you how to do a forward uh, fold that stretches, that opens up your shoulder blade, roll your shoulders up and back, clasp your hands together, straighten your arms, inhale, look up, and exhale, forward, forward, look forward, 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 and drop your head. And then pull your hands forward as much as possible. This is a great stretch for your hamstring as well as your shoulder, your shoulder joints. It opens up your joint. And if you can dangle your head, then it really helps as well. So I would recommend inversion if, you, if it's possible for you. I dangle myself upside down on a yoga trapeze and it's a great way of lengthening your spine and you use the center of gravity to straighten your spine and you create space in between the vertebrae and that would really help uh, for people with stenosis. So for people who have a bulging disc, make sure that after you've arched, you do not bend, you do not bend forward because, because your disc is, has already been squeezed out. So it's very important to keep, keep your back straight the whole time and not bending forward like those with stenosis do. And um, another pose that is very good for you is actually um, something that you can do at home if you have two yoga bricks. is to have um, your arms, your forearm on the, you have two yoga bricks, you have the forearm on the mat, and then you just do this exercise. That way, you're actually strengthening your glute, and also you're actually, re you're actually um, bending your spine backwards to undo all the hunching. It opens you up as well, and, uh, and then you straighten your leg, and then you do this kind of exercise and that would actually strengthen your, gl your glute and it would stabilize your sacroiliac joint. Okay, so finally, what I'd like to show you is um, are the things that you can do to improve your posture. If you want to remind yourself to have to open up your shoulders, and if you tend to forget, so I'll take this sacroiliac belt off. So you can, you can have a posture correcting device like this. And it reminds you to open up your shoulders, especially when you're on the computer, you're thinking about other things. And also this one keeps your back straight as well. So 
imagine that you're a ballet dancer. You open up your shoulders and you have your belly in. And that already is a much better posture than you hunching. For. You can't hunch forward with this belt on. So this is something that you can consider, get, consider getting if, uh, if you have a really bad posture. And then um, I have this seat as well. This is like an ergonomic seat that you sit on and automatically it corrects your posture when you're sitting on a chair. I also used to have a kneel on chair. So I kneel down and the seat is at a 45 degree angle. And that way you're actually, if you need to sit down and not use the standing desk, then a kneel on ergonomic chair is something to consider. It doesn't, it keeps your back straight the whole time. So it's very good. And uh, what I want to show you is this. This is called a moxie, a moxie um, stick. It's Chinese herb, basically. And I have a piece of ginger and turmeric, which is highly anti-inflammatory. Then you put it into a tin. You burn, you burn this moxie stick. You put it into a tin like this. And what I had during the lockdown is that I had this. So imagine the four of them burning and it's very, very hot and all the smoke. The key is this is a moxie stick and you burn it like, a, like an incense and you just let whatever pain that you're going through, you just let your skin absorb the, the smoke. And the Chinese herb is a really good painkiller. So all the smoke comes through the pouch and then I put it onto, I can put it onto my lower back I can also put it onto my shoulders, my neck, wow, when it hurts. And it just burns for like an hour. And it's the most soothing thing that you can have when you're in a lot of pain. So I highly recommend the moxie stick or the moxie pouches and the tin cans as well. So um, to recap, the most important thing is to relax your mind, is to stimulate your uh, parasympathetic nervous system through breathing exercise, positive mindset, gratitude is a very good anti-inflammatory tool. And then, and then you have um, detox, you know, all the detox things that you can do, especially like sauna and magnesium bath. And also um, coffee enema is a very, very direct way of detoxing your liver. And it's, it's something that you can do. It, it's safe to do daily, actually. So it opens up your bile ducts and your gallbladder, and it goes directly into your liver and it detoxes you and it gets rid of all the crap that you have stuck in your, in your tummy. You'd be surprised by how much you can get out. And it's a very, it's a more effective than the, um, the castor oil on the liver. Um, sauna help, jumping uh, your lymphatic circulation Enhancing your um, lymphatic circulation really helps with like the rebound, the trampoline, and you can do your affirmations at the same time uh, while you're doing the rebounding and then you do your HRIT and that has no impact on your joints. And then of course, there are all these shoulder opening exercises that you can do um, and stretching your, your hip flexors, stretching your hamstrings to release your lower back uh, opening up your shoulders to release your neck. Or, and also we hold a lot of tension in our shoulders without noticing it. So just, just intentionally release all the tension in there and you will feel much better. Of course, you know, lymphatic massage is a great way of detoxing as well. So all these stretches help. And remember that it was gravity that got you into trouble. So you can also use gravity, but the other way, like this, to use the weight of your head to open, to just undo all the hunching, to undo all the mistakes that you have accumulated over the years. And whenever you can, just dangle your head down. If you don't have a fit ball, just dangle your head off the edge of your bed or the couch, and that would really, really help. Um, so in terms of anti-inflammatory, uh, what you eat, of course, is very important. Fruit, vegetables, lots of water, herbal tea, are all very good antioxidant, anti-inflammatory. 
uh, food and what to avoid is bad oil, like seed oil, processed food, like white flour, refined flour and, and rice, anything that's white basically. And uh, chemicals like MSG is highly inflammatory. So basically processed food, uh, seeds oil, nut oil, like omega-6 is not good. Omega-3 would really help, especially, but not from fish because the sea is very contaminated. So I would get omega-3 from algae and from uh, hemp seeds as well, for example. Even nuts like um, walnuts have omega-3 and flax seeds as well. That's very, very good. And um, uh, so I think that is the Vortex Vitality Method is positive mindset, detox, yoga and Pilates and nutrition. Uh, if you are not a vegetarian, then bone broth is also very healing because it's got a lot of gelatin and collagen to repair. And I would also recommend in, intermittent fasting because when you're not eating, you as, after 17 hours, you, um, the process of autoph autophagy happens, which is the recycling of dead and cancer cells. And our bodies would use the protein from these cells to repair itself and stem cells are created, human growth hormones are created while we're fasting. The longer we fast, the, the more stem cells, the more healing we get for our body. So it starts at 17 hours and it peaks at 72 hours. So look into intermittent fasting if you can. It would be really, really good for your healing. So I hope that you've enjoyed this session. And if you have any questions at all, and if, if I can help you to go further into the Vortex Vitality Method to not just for pain relief, but for a healthier lifestyle, for more vitality, then please feel free to um, send me a message and visit my website, vickyvortex.com. I've created some new online courses that you can do and practice to strengthen your core, your spine, and to have a healthy lifestyle even though you're extremely busy. So thank you so much for joining me. And it, please, if you have, I can't see your questions right now, but if you have any questions, feel free to contact me and I will answer your questions. Thank you and uh, have a great Sunday. See you soon. Bye.